The festive season is upon us. We're just three days away from Christmas. And if you are working hard on your membership right now and you're planning to keep working on it over the holiday period, I want you to stop what you were doing and listen very, very closely to this episode. You're listening to the Membership Guys podcast, bringing you proven practical tips and advice from the leading experts on growing a successful membership business each and every week. And now, here's your host, Mike Morrison. All right, what's up, everyone? You are listening to the Membership Guys podcast. Thanks for hanging out with me and spending part of your day listening to the show. Today, we're talking all about running a membership site over the holidays. Now, for some of you who may have just started your membership this year, this might be the first time you've been running your membership as we approach Christmas and the festive season. And maybe you're thinking, well, you know, not everyone in my community celebrates Christmas. Maybe there's people of different faiths and persuasions. Maybe there's um, people who just don't celebrate. They prefer to work. So that means I need to keep working, right? That means it needs to be business as usual. Perhaps you're not planning on taking a break from your membership because maybe you've never taken an extended break from your membership site. So today, I really want to dive into that because it shouldn't be business as usual for your membership over the festive season. Now, I'm actually reaching back into the vault and picking out a specific episode I did about this very topic. I think it was two years ago, so 2018, I believe, is uh, when we originally put out this episode. But the advice that I share in it is as relevant now as it was back then, and it's the perfect time for you guys to hear it. So let's go back into the archives and check out episode 178, Running a Membership Through the Holidays, Six Things That You Should Be Doing. So let's dive into it. Six things that you should be doing in your membership business during the holiday season. The first of these is something I love doing each and every year, and that is doing some form of year-end review content. So at the end of every year here on the podcast, starting back in 2016, I believe, we do a very special episode, which is usually the last episode in December. And in that episode, we do a recap, we do a review of the 10 most popular episodes of the Membership Guys podcast over the past 12 months. So this is a great opportunity for us to cap off the year by taking a little bit of a look back, picking out some of the best moments and, you know, really tapping into what has most resonated with our listeners. It's also a great way of us creating something a little bit different, a little bit special. It feels like a special episode, something that has been created to celebrate the holiday season. So we've done two of those now, 2016, 2017, and in a few weeks' time, in episode 181, we'll be doing exactly the same thing, counting down the 10 most popular episodes of the Membership Guys podcast during 2018. So that sort of year-end review is something that we'd encourage you to do in your own membership. So maybe it's a review of the biggest lessons that you've learned, the highlight of your year. Maybe it's member successes, so you could actually get sound bites or little interviews and clips from your members and compile them as a year-end membership review or a roundup of your best content like we do on the Membership Guys podcast. Now, Fun fact, this year's episode actually comes out on Christmas Day. So we recently changed our release day from Wednesday to Tuesday, just because that gives us a little bit more of the week to actually promote the show. Whereas previously releasing it in the middle of the week meant that our promotional efforts for the show kind of had to straddle the weekend a bit. Um, Anyway. I digress. So we changed the release date to a Tuesday. And of course, this year, Christmas Day is a Tuesday. So episode 181 is going to come out on Christmas Day. Now, I doubt people are going to be pushing their presents aside on Christmas morning to listen to that episode. But these year-end reviews do go down very well. And if you think about how things like TV programming is run around the holidays, quite often... You have special episodes of shows. You have Christmas specials. You certainly have them in the UK. I know you have them in the US. In fact, the Christmas specials of The Office, which controversially, I kind of prefer the US version to the UK version. Don't tune out the show. 
I said it was controversial, um, but they have Christmas specials. So with those Christmas specials, there's a little bit of a pattern interrupt going on. Something that tells people that this episode is not like the others. It's something we're doing that is special to mark the end of the year. So that's what we do with ours and it works well. So think about whether you could do something similar. Not just a podcasting. It could be a blog. could be a video. could be a Facebook Live. It might be a workshop that you do just inside your membership. Again, looking at lessons learned, highlights of the year, member successes, maybe even just a fun kind of member party. Maybe you do an hour live hangout with your members where members can actually join you on a Zoom call or on a Facebook Live just to hang out with you. No format, no formal structure, just almost a virtual Christmas party. Could you do something like that as a way of capping off the year for your audience and for your members? Something like that can be very fun. The next thing you could do during the holiday season is to run a seasonal promotion. Now, the holidays are a great time to run a promotional campaign, whether it's a discount, whether it's a promotion where you offer some bonuses, some sort of event marketing like a summit or a challenge. The festive theme gives you a lot of fun elements to play with that you don't get the chance to tap into at other times of the year. So you can really get creative, you can really play around with that. And of course, if you look out into the wide world, there's all sorts of examples of people doing specific promotions that are tailored to the Christmas theme. Lots of Santa Clauses, lots of snowmen, lots of Christmas trees, all that sort of thing. So you can use that theme to pep up your promotions, pep up your launches, that sort of thing. Now, something that can work really well for a promotion Now, something that makes a really good promo, if you have the tech to allow it, is a gifting promotion where you do some sort of an offer or a big push on allowing others to purchase membership that they then give to somebody else as a gift. Because, of course, at this time of year, people are buying gifts for each other. They're thinking about what's going to make a great present for my significant other, for my friend, for my partner, for my family member and so on. And so it may be that, you know, if you've got a guitar membership, even if you're not a big guitar enthusiast, your partner may be, or your friend or family member. And so gifting them a year's membership to that site, that could be an awesome Christmas gift. You know, people give vouchers, people give gift certificates and that sort of thing. So maybe that's something you could explore. Some membership site plugins have the options that allow that sort of gifting where you can come on your site and they can sign up to essentially create what amounts to a gift certificate that they can then give to somebody else. Now that can just be something you provide them digitally. You could potentially go one step further and this really does depend on how logistically things are set up in your business, but you could look at ways in actually creating something physical so you can actually physically create something that's about the size of a business card on which you have printed different promo codes or a gift certificate code or a coupon that allows someone to join your membership for free and then you sell those to your audience so might be something worth investigating something worth exploring gifting can work really really well around this time of the year because obviously this time of year people are more prone to buying gifts for other people Something we've done before with the membership guys and that we're going to be doing this year is actually running an advent calendar campaign. So you can actually get a plugin for WordPress that allows you to essentially have an advent calendar, virtual digital advent calendar on your site. And then every day, a new thing is released within that calendar. So sometimes it may just be a new blog post or a new piece of content. So you'll actually see on our advent calendar That today, December 4th, if you go over to the membership guys and you check out our advent calendar, you'll see behind today's advent calendar window is this podcast episode. But not every day of the advent calendar is just a new piece of content. In some of them, maybe it's a giveaway. Maybe it's a silly video of my head and Callie's head superimposed over some dancing elves, which is something we've done um, in previous years, or an embarrassing photograph of us in Christmas jumpers and stuff like that. So you can have a lot of fun with this, and this gives you something daily to be talking about and getting your audience excited about. 
And of course, it's very in fitting with the festive theme. You couldn't do this sort of advent calendar promotion at other times of the year. Now, it's not just about fun stuff. It's not just about releasing your content. You can have flash sales somewhere within the advent calendar. You could launch new products. So it might actually be that, you know, on the 10th day, you open the doors to your membership. If you have a membership where the doors are closed, you open the doors to the membership unexpectedly for a 24 hour period and you really tap into that urgency there. So again, it's just thinking about creative ways of really using that seasonal theme to promote your membership. And if you run a Google search for WordPress Advent Calendar plugins, you'll find a few different options. So check those out if you like the sound of doing something like that for your audience. Third thing we recommend membership owners do around the holiday period is to take a break. This is definitely something that too many people forget to do. And that's true year round. People just forget to take time away from their membership. But please, please take some time away from your membership site over the holidays. You shouldn't be answering forum posts between forkfuls of Christmas dinner. Take time off, relax, have fun. Christmas is usually a time where family and friends are gathering around, or even if it's not, it's a time for binge watching on Netflix. It's a time for playing the latest video games, or it's a time for, you know, getting out there and throwing some snowballs around. It's so important to take breaks from your membership and have some good quality downtime. And the Christmas period really is the perfect time to do that. The world isn't going to end if you have some time away. And chances are your members are doing just that. They're taking a break. They're binging Netflix series. They're spending time with family, friends, with their children. They're not going to be sitting at their computers logging into your membership Things aren't going to fall apart if you take some time away from your membership. Unfortunately, there's just far too much focus on hustle and grind and all that nonsense these days. Some people consider it a badge of honour that they never take a break and that they work all through the holidays. I remember all the way back, years back, when I was running an agency and I would see some of my peers tweeting about the fact that they were building websites on Christmas morning and how, you know, real entrepreneurs never stop and this is what it takes to build a business. And <laughs> that didn't tell me that they were some incredible entrepreneur that just told me that they were so disorganized and so lacking in control of their business that it would fall apart if they didn't take time away. It's not a badge of honor. It's not a good thing to be incapable of taking a break. Close the laptop, shut down the computer, take a break over the Christmas period, spend some time with your friends, spend time with your family, spend time with yourself. I mean, that's what you're doing all this for anyway, right? You're not running a membership just to build up loads of cash in the bank account that you'll probably die before you get the chance to spend. I know this is getting a bit dark and getting a bit morbid, <laughs> but we're doing this so that we can live a happy life, so that we can take time away without being stressed. Trust me, your members will benefit from it too. So if you're thinking about this, well, you know, actually, no, I'm not doing this for the lifestyle. I want to build a business. I want my business to be the best it is. You know what? Your business and your members, your customers, they will benefit from you taking a break because you're not serving anyone if you're burning yourself out. So if you are looking for a pure business benefit, if you're thinking to yourself, Mike, but it is all about the hustle. It's all about the grind. A real entrepreneur does what it takes to build their business. Let me tell you this. What it takes to build a business is making sure you don't run yourself into the ground because your business will suffer if you do that. So if you're looking for a business-based justification for taking a break, that's it. Even if you've got to force yourself to take some time off, no that that time away is actually an extremely important investment in your business. Anyway, soapbox away on that. Just please take a break. Please, please take a break. If you lose, everyone loses. If you burn out, your members will suffer for it. Take time away during the holiday period. The perfect time to do it. Now, even with all of that said, the whole idea of being away from your membership over the holidays may still be causing you a little bit of anxiety. But really, the key 
is in managing expectations over that holiday period. So the fourth thing that you should be doing is clearly communicating what your availability will be to your members. Set and manage those expectations and enforce those boundaries. So whether you're taking a complete break or even if you just decided you're going to have a little bit of reduced availability. So maybe you're going to log in for an hour every single day to answer any urgent posts in your group or your forum, but then that's it. However you're handling it, make sure that you're actually communicating with your members about what to expect during the holidays. Put a message on your customer support forms. Add a notice or an announcement to your website's dashboard. Pin a post to the top of your Facebook group. Send an out-of-office email message. Tell your members in your weekly newsletters to them and set up an out-of-office message so that anyone who emails you knows when you're going to be around. So important to make it clear what your availability is during the holiday period and over what time span. So, you know, if you're taking a break, when is it from? When is it to? If you don't make this sort of stuff clear, then that's when you start to get panicked emails. You know, quite often, if people are getting in touch with you or people are posting and you don't reply, then if they don't know that there's a reason why you're not replying, if they don't know that you're away or that maybe you'll only be checking messages in the morning, then they start to panic because they don't know when you'll actually be back. They think they're being ignored. They think there might be an issue when actually if it was just clear to them what your availability was and they could tailor their expectations to that, then they'd be less inclined to get panicky. And as a result, you're getting far fewer emails and you're getting far less pressure to pull yourself away from that break that you're taking and jump on top of stuff in your membership. Now, I'm sure that there's still some of you listening thinking, yeah, but Mike, what happens if someone actually does have a real serious emergency? Well, you may very well still be checking your emails over the holidays without necessarily actively being on top of everything in your membership. And so if you're doing that, or maybe you've got a virtual assistant who's doing that or a member of your team who's just keeping an eye on the emails just in case something actually seriously time sensitive does come up, then it's really it's up to you whether to jump on that. So maybe mention that you're going to be aware that you're only going to be checking emails periodically and that unless it's an emergency, you won't be replying until your return. That way, if it is an emergency, you're covered. So you can still be checking your emails without feeling like you have to reply to all of them because you've told people, I'm not going to be replying unless it is actually an emergency. That takes the pressure off you a little bit. Now, of course, this is assuming that it's just you handling the customer service side of things. If you have staff in your team, then of course, they'd be expecting a break over the holidays too. They'd be expecting to have a little bit of reduced availability, but it doesn't have to mirror yours. Maybe you want to take two weeks off over Christmas, but maybe your staff are just needing to take a few days. Or maybe you want to take two weeks off where it's a week before and then the week between Christmas and New Year, and they want to take just the day before Christmas up until maybe a few days in the New Year. You know, your holidays, your reduced availability doesn't have to be exactly the same as your team's. You can stagger this. You can have it overlapping so that the actual period during which everybody is away or during which there's the least amount of availability is shortened. And if you're taking more time away than your staff are taking, or again, you know, if you're staggering it so that there's a bit of an overlap so that not everyone's away at the same time, then you can just empower, leave your staff in charge of customer support during the time that you're away on the understanding that they don't get in touch with you, on the understanding that only the most vital of emergencies get escalated to you. Now, it's not just about customer service either. It's about setting expectations inside your community, so your forum, your Facebook group, letting people know you mightn't be around as much. We all like to think that the world is going to end, the world is going to fall apart if we are not there, available 24-7. But honestly, a lot of that is ego because, you know, realizing that you're not quite as vital to the day-to-day, minute-to-minute lives of your members, sometimes that can be a slight blow to the ego. And as such, we do like to convince ourselves, you know, if we're not checking the forum, if we're not checking the Facebook group 24-7, then my members will hate me. Chances are they won't even notice. So make sure you're managing expectations. Make sure you're communicating clearly to your members and to your staff 
when you're going to be available, what they can expect. That's going to make dealing with customer service and handling your community so much better, so much easier, so much smoother during the holiday season. The fifth thing to do during the holiday period is take some time to reflect on your progress and your achievements over the past year. The holiday season is really the perfect time to do this. Think about what went well, what didn't go so well, and why. What have been your major achievements, your accomplishments, your challenges, your highs, and your lows? It doesn't have to be a real formal, rigorous exercise in documenting this stuff. Just take the time to think. People don't take the time to just think anymore. Make sure you do that. Reflect. Think back. How have you felt about this year? What goals and plans did you have at the start of the year? What progress did you make towards them? Did those goals stay the same as the year progressed? Or did they change? If they changed, how did they change? Why did they change? And what did that change mean to your business? Use the downtime of the holiday period and the finality of the year to take stock to reflect, and to think. And please, don't beat yourself up if you haven't hit your goals or if things haven't gone the way you want. That's business. That's life. A lot of the time, these goals are arbitrary. They're guesses. They're best estimates. So don't dwell. Make a deliberate effort to focus on the positives from your year and then use those positives to plan next year's goals. And then use the things that you have learned and you have achieved, the things you have fallen short on, the things that you've exceeded expectations on. Use all of this to help you plan next year's goals. And that's the final thing I want to recommend that you do during the holiday period. Plan out next year's goals. New year is the perfect time to set goals for the next 12 months. And indeed, beyond that. I know my good friend Mark Asquith from Podcast Websites, he likes to set short-term, mid-term and long-term goals that span up to an entire decade. So he's actually setting goals 10 years in advance. Now that sounds a little crazy, it sounds a little daunting, but trust me, there's a little bit more method to that madness. And he talks about this on his own podcast, The 7 Minute Mentor. Look that up on iTunes, check out episode 445. I really dig Mark's approach to goal setting. The episode you want of that podcast is called Plan the Decade, and that's a seven-minute mentor podcast. Look it up on iTunes, give it a listen, hit subscribe as well, because the dude is smart. Anyway, so again, here I am advocating for using the new year as the kickoff point for goal setting for 2019 and beyond. Now, I'm sure that you'll hear people saying, well, you shouldn't wait until the new year to make goals. Honestly, that's just pretentious waffle. New Year is as good a time as any. And in fact, it's a better time if you're someone who's drawn to symbolism. If you're someone who benefits from the slightly extra bit of momentum given by seeing other people talking about their goals and other people making a big push on what they want to achieve during the year. So if the whole newness of the year is a bit of a kick up the butt for you, then why not set those business resolutions? So during the holiday period, think about what those goals are. Think about what you want to achieve in the next 12 months. And then when the new year kicks off, commit to those goals, get them down on paper, start fleshing out the plan to actually reach them and get to work. All right, so I hope you found that useful and hopefully it's given you a good cause to think a little bit differently about how you might be running your membership business during the holiday season. That whole thing about making sure you take time away, if there's only one thing that you change on the back of listening to this episode, I hope it is that. It is crazy. I still remember seeing friends of mine back when I was a freelance uh, web developer and marketer, seeing friends of mine boasting about the fact they were eating their Christmas dinner with the laptop on one knee working on client projects. And they took that as as a sign of dedication. It was a badge of honor, how committed they were, how amazing they were. And to me, that just told me, man, you've got your priorities wrong. You have really got your priorities wrong. It doesn't tell me that you're a grinder or a hustler. It just tells me that you're too badly organized to take some blooming time away from your your business. So I really do hope you take, even if it's just that bit on board, but 
I know that there'll be some of you who will be utilizing some of the other ideas about end of year content, about making sure that you review and plan and set goals and all that sort of stuff. Now, it's probably too late in the day for you to do something like kind of the advent calendar promotional campaign that we talk about, because, you know, that would be a very short advent calendar because we're just three days away from Christmas. However, you could do a New Year's countdown. You could, you know, do a different spin on it um, or do something completely different as a promotional campaign to tap into the festive spirit. All right, that is it from me. Thanks so much for spending part of your day with me. Hopefully you have an amazing holiday season. Hopefully you have a great Christmas if you celebrate it. And hopefully what you've heard today helps you to make sure that your membership keeps ticking over nicely in the background, but also that you get some much needed time away to relax, to reflect and to plan for what I'm sure will be a fantastic 2021. And in fact, In two weeks' time right here on the Membership Guys podcast, we're going to be talking all about planning. So next week's episode will be our look back on 2020 at the 10 most popular episodes of the Membership Guys podcast. Of course, we talked about um, that being a regular part of our holiday routine every year, doing our top 10 countdown. But the week following that, which uh, will be uh, the first week in January, The episode is going to be all about planning and goal setting, goal setting in particular for your membership business in 2021. So that'll be out on January the 5th. Make sure that you are subscribed to the Membership Guys podcast. Hit that subscribe button in your podcast player to ensure that you do not miss a single episode and that you get that episode about practical goal setting for your membership straight in to your podcast queue. All right, that's it. Thanks again. I'll be back again next week with another episode of the Membership Guys podcast. If you enjoyed this week's episode of the Membership Guys podcast, we invite you to check out membershipacademy.com. The Membership Academy is the essential resource for anyone at any stage of starting, growing, and running a membership website. Whether you're still trying to figure out what your idea is going to be, or whether your website's already up and running and you're just looking for ways to grow it and attract new members, then the Membership Academy can help you to get to the next level. With our extensive course library, step-by-step membership roadmap, exclusive member-only discount perks and tools, as well as our supportive, active community that will help you along the way with feedback, encouragement, and advice, the Membership Academy is the perfect place to be for anyone looking to start, manage, and grow a successful membership business. Check it out at membershipacademy.com.